let me just start that. And <clears throat> it's a topic I've covered um, uh, once before, but not for quite a while. So I'll, uh, I'll cover it today. It's a, it's a convention and it's a bit of the opponent suit after your partner has made a suit over call. It's a very, very popular convention, both in ACL and in uh, Standard American or Standard Bridge. And I think the robots, if you play on BBO, also uh, play this convention. And basically, it uses a bit of the opponent's suit to show support for your partner suit and to invite game. It's uh, also known as the invitational qubit, and it's used to invite game. Uh, for example, where your partner is overcalled with one of a suit and you want to bid at least to the three level, you'll have to go three level and you, you make that um, invitational bid of bidding the opponent's suit. So here's an example of it where North uh, has opened one diamond, your partner has overcalled one spade. Now, that one spade bid, as we know, can be a pretty wide ranging bid from say eight up to 16 points say. So you're sitting there with your 10 points. You've got a good fit in spades. You've got a nine card fit in spades and you might well think you want to invite game. But if your partner's near the bottom end of that around eight points, you probably not, don't want to bid game. But if they're closer to the top end, you want to invite game. So normally you might in, make a bit of, say, uh, three spades on this. But if you're playing the unassuming qubit, what you can do instead is bid the opponent's suit. And we'll look at, in a moment about why you do this rather than bidding three spades. But basically, bidding two diamonds to show a, a, an in real game hand where, where you want to invite game frees up a, a bit of three spades to mean something else. So uh, if, if you've agreed to play this uh, convention, you can bid two diamonds here. And that is saying, partner, I'd like to go to at least three spades, but it depends on how strong your hand is. That bid is of course artificial um, and it should be alerted. So in face-to-face -face or real bridge, your partner should alert that. Um, now, if, it, um, if the bidding goes on, um, your partner then will look at their hand and decide whether they have a strong overcall or a fairly weak overcall. If East on this hand is here has only got nine points, so they're really like uh, towards the bottom end of uh, the one spade overcall, and so they would just go to two spades on this hand. That's saying, okay, partner, my hand is a minimum for my one spade overcall, and I'm just going to sign off in two spades. I don't want to go any further than that. Or sometimes um, the bidding has gone a bit further. For example, if it's gone something like this, one diamond, one spade, south bids two diamonds. Now for West to bid the opponent's suit, he has to bid three diamonds, and that's what he would do here. And obviously that's committing the partnership at least to the three level. And again, with a minimum hand, East would just sign off in three spades. And you should um, respect that and not go any further. I think if you look at these two hands together, you can see you'll probably make three spades, but no more than that, because you're going to lose two clubs and two diamonds. The third diamond you can rough, and hopefully you will just make your nine tricks there. Do and Trump, if you're having any questions about this. Tony, that hand it's got quite a few losers which one west, west west yes it's Six, eight losers so. it is it is eight losers yes so um i mean if it was much weaker than that you might think i don't really want to invite game but if your partner does have i mean although it, it is eight losers the, the one good thing it has is it does have a very good trump fit you know you have at least a nine card trump fit so that is is a factor and I think, um, you know, you, it's the kind of hand you want to invite uh, game, but, but, that, you. but you wouldn't want to be much weaker than that. Um, sometimes when you're using this bid, you'll, 
you'll get into a situation where the opponents might double you. So here, if it goes one diamond, one spade, two diamonds, three diamonds, a double by north normally is used to say, I have very good diamonds and I'm quite happy to have that suit led if we end up defending or it's sort of emphasizing the strength of the, uh, the diamonds you have. Of course, it's never going to end up in three diamonds doubled, uh, whether north doubles or not, east is going to go back to spades. Either here they'll go back to three spades with a, um, a minimum hand, um, or um, if they have a stronger hand, here east has got a hand with uh, 15 points, a much stronger hand towards the top end of the normal range for a one spade over call. And here they should probably accept the invitation. Three diamonds is, is inviting game. And with this hand, I think I would bid four spades here. Uh, again, if we look at the two hands together, I think we'll make four spades quite easily because we're only going to lose two diamonds as long as we rough, are able to rough the third one and we might lose a club. So you should uh, definitely be able to make um, four spades with this hand. Um, so what's the point of this bid? Well, the main point of it is that it frees up the jump bid uh, to three of your partner suit to be used as a weak bid based on trump length, at least four trump, designed to put maximum pressure on the opponents. And it's one of the bids that sort of fits in very well with um, the law of total tricks, which I think uh, many of you know about, that in a competitive auction, if you have nine total tricks between you, nine, sorry, nine total trumps between you and your partner, it's very often a good idea to compete to the three level. And it works out best um, to do it right away uh, because of the preemptive value of it. So um, it can be used when the opponents have both bid a suit, when they found a fit, or sometimes it can be used when no fit has been found. In that case, you should bid the first um, suit that was bid by the opponents to show um, what the unassuming Q bid shows, which is a limit raise or better in your partner's suit. So let's have a look at um, an example of this. Let me just move that down here. Um, so imagine it's gone one heart by north, uh, one spade by your partner and two hearts. Well, you have four spades here, but your hand is very weak. You have no real interest in um, inviting game, but you do have nine trump. So here, if you're, especially if you're playing the unassuming cue bid, you can make a jump bid to three spades on a hand like this to show a relatively weak hand, but with four trump. And particularly if you're not vulnerable uh, or if, and if the opponents are vulnerable. So here I've written that North South are vulnerable, East West are not vulnerable. This is a very attractive bid. It gets in the way of the opponents and it really forces them to, to make a decision about whether they're going to go on or not. So if the layout was something like this, for example, um, your three spade bid really puts pressure on North. Um, and, you know, maybe they wanted to bid three hearts, but now they have to decide either to bid four hearts or, or to pass. Um, and likewise, if it comes back down to South, um, they not quite sure whether they should bid four hearts or not. On this particular layout, it turns out that with best possible play and best possible defense, both sides can make nine tricks. So uh, if you're able to get it for three spades, that should be a good score for you, rather than letting them, the opponents play it in, in three hearts. Or if I keep the West hand the same, but change the other hands a bit. So here, um, the West hand is the same. So again, you would jump to three spades. Um, on this particular layout, um, I made the North-South hand slightly stronger and they can actually make four hearts now, whereas East-West can only make two spades. But nonetheless, you do well if you can play it in three spades, only going down one, rather than letting the opponents play it in three hearts or four hearts. So that's the real advantage of the unassuming Cupid, that it frees up a jump to the three level uh, to show a relatively weak hand, but with good Trump support. 
Um, so I've just got a few questions for you. I'm going to launch these as polls in a moment. And the question is, what do you think you should bid with each of these hands? So this is the first one here. North has opened one club. Your partner over calls a heart. South bids a spade and over to you. And I'm gonna launch in a poll, poll in a moment, and I'd like you to pick a bid that you think West should make with this hand. North, South are vulnerable, East, West are not on this hand. What do you think West should bid? Let me end the poll and share the results with you. And most of you here went for, well, it was a tie between two hearts and three hearts with 29% saying two clubs and one person passing. Well, I think this is a pretty good hand uh, with only five points, but with four trump to bid to the level of your trump fit. And yes, I would recommend bidding three hearts with this hand. That shows a hand with good trump fit, but you're not interested in, in looking for game. And the idea of the three heart bid is it will keep the opponents uh, out of the auction and you'll maybe be able to play it in, in three hearts. Um, two hearts could work out well because the opponents might not bid, although I think they probably would bid, find it much easier to bid over two hearts. And this is not really a hand to use the unassuming cue bid, which will be a bit of two clubs because that would be a real invitation to your partner to bid four hearts, okay? If we look at the hands together, I think we can see what? We're going to lose two spades, a diamond, and two clubs, I think. So we'll probably just make eight tricks and would go down one in three hearts, but that would be better than letting the opponents make something their way. As you can see, they've probably got a good they have a good fit in spades, and uh, but they may find it hard to outbid us over three hearts. Um, Tony. Yeah. So if I had bid two hearts, my partner knows that I've got sort of like six to nine points. That's right. Yes. But. So do you have to agree beforehand that we're going to be playing unassuming qubit? Yes. Because if I did three three hearts without that, yes. I would assume that my partner was really strong. That's I had right. Ten, I had 10 to 12 points. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So you have to agree whether you're playing unassuming qubits. And if you are, then you can bid three hearts here, knowing that it's not invitational. If you're not playing that, you're absolutely right, Jay three hearts would be a much stronger bid and would definitely sounds like you're inviting game, whereas you don't really want to be uh, uh, inviting game here. Okay. Thank so, you. So yes, you, you, you have to agree, uh, agree that you're playing this. Um, here's, a, here, here's another one. I'm just going to uh, mute everyone there. Um, just uh, mute everyone. Um, so here's another one. Again, the bidding was um, one club, one heart by your partner, one spade. What would you bid with this hand? Have a little think about it, and I'm going to launch a second poll in a moment. Let me share the results with you. And this time, most of you have gone for two hearts, so 74%, which I agree with, with a small number passing or bidding two clubs or three hearts. And yes, I think this is a good bid for two hearts. You have a fit with your partner, um, but it's only an eight card fit and you're only seven points. So I think two hearts would be a good bid there. And you may not end up you know, getting the contract. They may outbid you but you probably don't want to, um, I, I wouldn't sort of jump to the three level uh, with only an eight card trump fit. So I think two hearts is a good choice there. And finally, what about this one? 
Again, it's gone one club, one heart, one spade. What do you think West should bid here? Share the results with you. And most people have gone for two clubs here, 54%, which I agree with, uh, with some others going for two diamonds or two hearts, two spades, or three hearts, which is quite popular. Well, um, I don't think you should bid three hearts with this hand because you're too strong for it. Um, you, three hearts should be a much weaker hand with an extra trump. So you've got at least a nine card trump fit. Um, and I think two clubs is, is the kind of hand where you want to invite game, uh, game in heart. So you cue bid the opponent's first bid suit. By the way, I wouldn't bid um, two diamonds here because you have a fit in hearts. Your partner's one heart should promise a five card, good five card suit. So don't um, think about introducing your own suit there when you know you have a heart fit there. So on this hand here, if I do invite game by bidding two clubs, this is the kind of hand where my partner is more than a minimum for their um, one heart bid. And they should uh, perhaps accept the invitation by going to four hearts. Um, the other bid they could make on this hand, because we're still at the two level, so they've got a choice. They could bid two hearts, three hearts, or four hearts. So four hearts is saying, let's go for game. Two hearts is saying, no, I've got a very weak hand. And three hearts would be sort of inviting game, saying, uh, I'm not sure. So, um, you know, try and choose uh, two hearts or four hearts. Three hearts makes that life difficult for your partner. But um, if you do bid four hearts on this particular hand, you should be okay. Although in um, looking at the two hands together, I think I've got um, the probability of losing two spades and two clubs here. Um, I should be okay because whatever happens, I can draw trumps and then I'd be able to cash my diamonds. So as long as, um, so the opponents won't have a chance to take four tricks uh, right, right off and I'll be able to cash the diamonds and discard some uh, losers there on the good diamond suit. So I should be able to make four hearts there. Bernie. Hello. Hello. Um, is what is the range on this uh, uh, qubit? Because you don't want to lose the opportunity of making game if you've got enough. Uh, if you've got if you've got a very strong hand yourself. So what do you think the limit? If I mean, if you had fifteen points yourself, you go straight to game with support for your client, your your partner. Yes. Suit. But yes. what? So, so what should the range be? I would say something like ten to twelve points. Um, you know. Some, something like that. Uh, and if so, you if you if you had first if you had if you had thirteen points, would you go straight to game because you don't, your partner could have as few as eight points? Yes, I mean perhaps thirteen points. I mean it also depends on you know how many trumps you have as well. But yes, if you want to make an invitational um, bid, um, then again, so maybe maybe it should be a little bit higher than that. Um, maybe it depends on your partner and how uh, aggressive they are in their overcall. So, uh, but that, that's that's normally what it's taken to be uh, something like you know, ten to twelve points, um, but, uh, some something like that. But but you know, if you if you think your partner could be quite light, then you can make it with a slightly stronger hand. Um, I, I mean, you could make it even if you're going to game anyway, but. You know, it's normally reserved for a hand where you just want to invite uh, invite game. Yes, of course, because you're bound to get another bid, aren't you? Yes, yes. So, so you could do that. I don't, I don't know if it's, that's recommended by any bridge authorities. It normally <coughs> isn't, but uh, yeah. Um, Tony, Tony yeah. before you go on, is there yeah. a minimum points? You've got a fit east west in this case. Yeah. Is there a minimum points you might? Decide not to bid anything. Oh, You've yes. got four points, five, five points. You, you mean to pass? Um, yeah. Well, yes. Um, I mean, certainly. Uh, I mean, I think if we go back to this, well, no, no, not that one, but You've got a good fit there. But um, we've got this one here. Yeah. Well, oh, I, I mean, I would always, I would always endeavour to support my partner's heart if I have 
three hearts in my hand. So, uh, any points? Well, no, no. I mean, um, you know, perhaps at least four points. What do you think? Uh, I, I would normally yeah. I would have taken it as five, but yeah, including okay. shortages, perhaps. But yeah, yeah, counting your shortages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do um, I, I should emphasize again the vulnerability because it is slightly dangerous if you're going to end up at the three level if you're vulnerable um, and you know go down two that, that as you know that that can be a very bad score of uh, two hundred even if the opponents don't double you um, it, going down two when you're vulnerable so um, so it's more useful when you're not vulnerable. Uh, to, sorry, the, the, the weak bid is more useful when you're not vulnerable, but obviously you can make this the real game invitational bid, whether you're vulnerable or not. Um, just wanted to talk about the, the name because it, there are, I've come across a number of reasons why it's got this name, but perhaps the most likely one is that it doesn't say anything about your, your holding in the suit you, you bid. So. It, it doesn't assume you've got a stopper or, or anything in that suit. It's just, um, that's just what, one name for it. And, and even in um, America, it's not, doesn't have this name, but it, it's widely used in this way that you cubid the opponent's suit uh, to show uh, a limit raise or better. There are also um, some other uses for the unassuming cubid. And these are also, uh, I mean, one of these is also very popular, which is, it can be used when your partner has made an opening bid and the opponent's overcall in a suit. That frees, that, that means you can now cubid the opponent's suit to show uh, a hand where you want to, uh, you know, invite game at the three level. And it frees up a direct raise to the three level to be a weak hand uh, with good trumps based on um, good trump support. So, for example, this, um, this hand here where South might open a heart, West overcalls a spade. North has only got six points here, but knows they have a very good trump fit. And I mean, you might even consider bidding four hearts on this hand. Um, although it does have a lot of losers. If, you, if you're if sort of looking at the losing trick count, North's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 losers there. Um, so even if you didn't want to bid four hearts, if you're playing the unassuming cubid in this situation, um, then you could bid three hearts here. Um, and that really puts pressure on the opponent. So it makes it hard for East to know whether they should bid or not. Should they bid three spades here um, or, or let you play it in, in three hearts? It, it's very hard to tell. On this particular layout, as I put it in, um, north south can make three hearts and east west can make four spades so they should really outbid you but if you if you bid that three hearts as a weak bid there then that that puts pressure on the opponent so some people do play it in this situation and if you have a regular partner it's a good thing to discuss Something. yes yes i'm very confused now oh. if <laughs> if i think that We've got a good fit, and I've got maybe nine, ten points, and I've cubid the unassuming cubid. I understand that's invitational to your partner. If I go three hearts, that means I'm very weak, but I've yes. got support in his hearts. Yes. Yes. What does it mean when I bid two hearts? Okay, um, so that was there was an example of that in one of the quizzes. I think it was um, this one. Yeah, this one. Uh, so here, uh, so if you've got one club, if you support, if you support your partner's overcall, um, here I would just bid two hearts. So it shows it, it. It's really unchanged from what what that bid means in in standard bidding. That that it shows something like six to nine points and at least three cards support. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, I normally bid that I, I take my partner for five, I yes. add it to what I've got, and that's a level of the bid. Right. That's a level that's right. to what I bid. Yes. So on this one, I would actually bid one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to the two level, yes. Yes, you'll bid yes. two hearts. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so that would be pretty much unchanged from what, okay. what you're Thank used you. to. Right. Anyway, that's, um, that's all I wanted to say about this topic. I hope you 
found that interesting. It is very useful and very widely played, especially in more um, expert bridge circles. So um, it's certainly something you should think about.